All righty. So hello everyone, my name is Hallie Johnson. I serve as the coordinator of student organizations over in student activities. And today I will be doing um, the purpose of today's SOD workshop. So SOD stands for Student Org Leadership Development. And um, it's the focus on cultivating healthy leadership skills. But again, this is a topic that can also portray in your everyday life as a student here at University of North Texas. So, the agenda today um, will just focus on thriving as a student org officer. And it's thriving as a student org officer is an important part of your leadership and your academic journey. So today's our overview will be on one, the importance of healthy leadership. Also, key elements on thriving up, key elements of thriving organization, setting boundaries, self-care for leaders. And also, I'm going to have some activities and share out portions as well. We're going to make this very um, interactive. And of course, at any point, if y'all have any questions, feel free to unmute yourselves and um, we'll go through that. So first, let's figure out why is healthy leadership? Why is it essential? There are benefits of balancing leadership with self-care. Healthy leadership is not only benefits the organization, but also enhances your own well-being. So balancing leadership and self-care leads to resilience, effectiveness, and satisfaction in your role as a student org leader or any of your leadership positions here at UNT. So right now, I just want to give like some of the key elements of thriving organizations. And I'm going to highlight some of those crucial elements for successful student organizations. So the first one is strong teamwork. I think we need to have the vision that we are all here with one purpose, one mind. And of course, in our organizations, we're going to be centered on that and centering everything back for teamwork and working in groups, um, even inside of the classroom, inside of our orgs is very important and elements that is crucial for being a successful student organization and a student org leader. The next element is clear communication. Let's not have any um, guesses or leave anyone confused or left out, making sure you're clear and direct when you're communicating within your student organization or within any of the other groups that you may be a part of. A next uh, um, third key element that I feel is defining your goals. Why are we here? What is the purpose of our organization? What is the purpose of the event we're hosting today? Where do we see ourselves in the spring semester? What are our goals for next academic year? What are our goals as our personal leaders as well? Defining those goals and keeping those at your forefront is also very important and very vital. The next element, element four, is positive organizational structure. So being positive. Um, so I think another key thing is making sure everyone knows the demographics of the org. How is our org structure? What is our exec board? Who do we report to for this? Making sure that no one's overstepping and also making sure it kind of goes back to that clear communication that the organizational structure and the culture of your organization is communicated to your org so that you can have that strong teamwork and everyone is clear about what you're doing and the work you're doing as well. And just being positive, I feel like another important thing in being a student org and also just being a leader in general is people are going to, um, they're going to feed off of your energy. So if you're being positive, that will trickle down to your members of your exec board, the members of your committees, the members of your org, and even those that are coming to your events or your programs that you're hosting. If you're positive, that's going to trickle down to everyone. And this is what successful organizations exhibit. Our own teamwork, clear communication, defined goals, and positive organizational culture. So the next point that I want to go over is setting boundaries. The importance of setting boundaries is very, very vital again. And I just wanted to share some practical tips and strategies when it comes to setting boundaries. So the first one is time blocking. 
So setting off your time and your schedule. So making a schedule, either if it's in your phone, if it's in your planner, if it's on your um, calendar, on your refrigerator, wherever that may be for you. And make sure you're blocking off time for, of course, your academics first as well as your responsibilities in your organizations as well. And also blocking off the time for, hey, from after six o'clock, I won't be answering any questions about this organization. Um, or also, if you know you're going to be in class, hey, y'all, I'm going to be in class from three to four on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Let's make sure if you need something that is vital, for the org or for my position, reach out to me before or after and being able that goes again with a clear communication and setting those boundaries. So, you know, um, you can tell your friends, tell your um, people in your org things all the time. But if um, someone reaches out to you after five, it's OK if you wait till the next morning to respond if it's not an emergency and just time blocking um, and setting those boundaries is very important. Step two for setting boundaries. I know this is one that many of us may struggle with is learning to say no. Even if you're capable of doing it, do not always feel like you have to say yes. You can say no and it's okay to set those boundaries. Do not put too much on your plate and just know how much you can handle at a time. And in many cases, sometimes you can say no, but it maybe suggest another member of your org or another resource on campus that can help the student or the member in your org with that particular situation. Another step I would say is delegating, delegating your responsibilities. Do not feel like you have to plan the entire event yourself. Do not Feel like you have to take on the entire project. Give parts to someone. A lot of our student orgs have boards, exec teams, which includes your president, your vice president. Um, you might have a treasurer. You might have an event coordinator. Make sure you're allowing other people in their roles to be able to fill out what their position says and not feel like you need to take everything on. And ask them for help. People don't know unless you ask. I think it's very vital to not be afraid to ask for help. So what I wanted to ask you all now that are here today, what are some strategies do you use to set boundaries um, in your organizations or in your personal life? And you can feel free to unmute or just type in the chat. I think I said boundaries on my personal time. Yes, it's important to have that personal time, that you time. Anyone else? Accept meetings as tentative so I have time to investigate if the meeting will be productive. I think that is a great one as well, especially setting boundaries not only on your calendar, but on everyone else's calendar as well. I think that's great. Moving along. So the next topic I want to talk about is the significance of self-care for our student org leaders or any leaders. So self-care is the foundation of effective leadership. It keeps you physically and mentally together and fit. So I just want us to reflect on these questions I have here. And then we're going to do a quick activity to show you about a self-care checklist. So if anyone wants to share out, why is self-care important to you? I think because sometimes we get so busy that um, we forget to, to do that. And we, we, when we focus on self-care, um, it makes us feel better. And when we feel better, we're more productive. I 100% agree. Then I know um, Chris might be typing in the chat, but I'll share. I think self-care is important for me personally just to reset. Um, I had experiences as a student org leader, and I was taking that time for myself was um, not just important for me, but also for our success. When students are burnt out, 
when students are tired, when you're not going to perform at your best ability. And that won't be good, one, for you and also for your organization. So I think that's another reason why self-care is very important. And I'll go to the chat. I can blow off steam. Oh, it helps with energy, managing stress, reassessing priorities. Unplugging is also essential. Yes, I agree. And then I just want us to reflect too, how can you take care of your physical and mental state better? And that one we don't necessarily need to share out, but I think it's always important on how can I improve? No one's ever going to be the perfect expert at self-care. Um, and I think just taking time to reflect on how can I get better at this? The next thing I wanted to share with you all was a self-care checklist. So I'm going to um, drop some examples here, but of course it may look better. Yes, drink less coffee. <laughs> that is the way we can all improve. Um, but this is a self-care checklist. And I think this is just a quick tool. Of course, you can make it however it suits for you. But to make sure during your week, during your day, during your month, however you may want to do it, that you are taking care of yourself and performing some of those self-care um items and some of them might not you might not even know that it's self-care but it is so one a big one is getting sleep getting those eight hours plus of sleep every night is a physical sign of self-care another one like chris mentioned is unplugging getting off social media taking a break getting off your computer closing the books for a little while and just unplug and spend time with yourself another one that i enjoy a lot is self pep talk so before i came in here today i talk myself up for my presentation um, just to motivate myself as well. And another one, as we talked about, is setting boundaries socially and also in your organizations. It might be reading. Um, some could just be taking a nice relaxing shower, a bath, listening to music, meditating, talking to a friend, spending time outside of your, um, your organization, outside of your business, and just, you know, um, focusing on yourself and again, I think another very important one is just giving yourself patience, um, giving yourself grace. Don't push yourself. Um, don't try to complete all of these every day or in one month. But uh, I think this is very important to make your own self-care checklist. And um, let's just explore this and uh, explore self-care together. Um, you can make it a thing within your organization and do some check-ins, make sure everyone is taking care of themselves or even in your friends or family and groups. You can make it a group effort and kind of um, compete to see where uh, where you are and who's uh, approving and just always push yourself to build your self-care routines. So the next one I want to talk about is effective leadership strategies. Effective leadership involves goal setting, effective communication, and conflict resolution. So goal setting, that goes back to defining what we are, defining our goals. Make sure you're setting those goals and making sure that you're completing them or working towards them. I think it's um, a great tool. Another one is effective communication. I think for student orgs is learning how your group and how your leaders and your organization and even how your target audience likes to be communicating with you. You might be sending emails, but you're noticing you get the best response in group meeting or you get the best response on your social media accounts. So just take that into reference um, as far as communicating with the people in your organization, also to those that you want to come to your programs, your event, engage with you to join, um, to meet them where they are with the communication. Another strategy is conflict resolution. Whenever there are problems, we should go into it with the mindset of how can we get across this? Um, not just how can we get through it? How can we get past it? How can we truly resolve the situation at hand? So, and I think with student leaders, you have to be ready that everything is not going to be peaches and cream, but also just being open to everyone's a voice and opinion or your organization. And also just being the example of all three of these, um, making sure you are using effective communication and you want other members of your organization to effectively communicate with you. And also 
if you want us to have a healthy conflict resolution, um, being a part of that and fostering those safe places so that when people of your organizations do have concerns, they feel open to coming to you. So these are just three effective leadership strategies. Does anyone want to share their own strategies or examples of leadership success that have been successful in your organization or in your roles? I'll give another example um, that has been effective with me in leadership is also just making personal relationships, being personal, being relatable, even though you might be in a role that takes more president. So as a president position versus maybe a general body member, um, still making those personal connections so that you understand who you are working with and y'all can better communicate is another strategy I think is very important. Okay, we'll move on. So the next one is leading with impact and well-being. So leading with, with well-being in mind ensures a positive impact on your organization. So I just wanted us to talk about what is your leadership style? We can reflect on that. And then the second reflection is how does your style align with your well-being? I'll give an example to get us started. So I will say this might not be an exact leadership style, but my leadership style is very direct and hands-on. And I feel like how that aligns with my well-being is I like to have effective communication again, and I just like to not be confused. So I like to give examples of my expectations directly. And then whenever um, members of my organizations in the past or anyone I'm working with now in my current role um, give examples and being hands on and being willing to jump in. I don't feel like just because I'm the coordinator of an event that I have to sit up with a checklist um, and just oversee. If something doesn't go perfectly, I'm always open to jumping in. So if we have car swipes going on and we're getting overwhelmed. I don't mind jumping in and I think that helps with my well-being and give me peace with um with the programs that I'm doing currently in my role and that's kind of like my leadership style being direct and hands-on and active does anyone else want to share their leadership style mine is very similar to yours I also um, am hands-on like to be involved and I also like to pre um, present a lot of visuals as I myself, I'm a visual learner. <laughs> yes. I think pictures can tell a lot of stories. So I also like to do that type. And then I do like to include um, some personal um, touch base. I think it's important to, make, important to make that connection with your people, that they do matter beyond a task. Yes. I totally agree there. And knowing, I think, as being a general member or any type of member of the org, your organizational body, knowing that they matter. Um, my position, my role here, my work matters just as much as anyone else in any other position or role in the org. It's very important. So thank you for sharing. So my next question, just a uh, share out, is how are we going to become healthy leaders? So a way that I've done with many um, student leaders in the past is developing personal action plans. So these are plans for imp implementing what we discussed and learned so far here today. And these are just where you'll say at the bottom, or I like to start in the middle a lot of times, what is your goal? What are your resources? And then I usually say what skills you have now, what skills do you need to work on? And then how can that action plan to get these goals completed and get these new skills developed? So um, I would like for us to take five minutes and at least try to jot down one column 
of um, a goal, a resource, and an action plan, and some of the skill that you have and a skill that you want to work on that aligns with that goal and um, your action plan. And I'll just give us five minutes and then we'll share out briefly. Okay, y'all, welcome back. So I will read the first one we have in the chat from F. Murray. 
um, current skills, committals, RFPs, database, um, implementation, and skills to work on, scheduling data and analysis using R, start grad school. Goals, take a class on how to use R in construction scheduling and meet with advisor for school. Very important utilizing your resources here on campus. And going to resources, UNT, course A, action plan, research classes, cost, and action plans. Research the class more, cost, date, make appointment with advisor this week. That is excellent, excellent example. Does anyone else want to share out? I guess current skills is, uh, I think I have good, like, analytic skills to analyze things. Yeah. Skills I need to work on is uh, definitely communication. <laughs> um, uh, also to be more, um, as far as in, in professional, to be more assertive skills to work on. Um, and my goals is to get a better understanding of what I'm because I'm studying uh, data analytics. So to get a better understanding of what I'm studying and um, to be successful in that and to start off like uh, maybe a consulting business. Um, the resources, I'm using the resources here with the UNT and um, also the resources that my instructors are providing to go. And my action plan is just to, to actually make myself extra busy, <laughs> pretty much. Thank you. Thank you all both for sharing. Um, yes, and always, the next action is just getting started. And I think that's just a good foundation. And of course, like I was saying, this can be used in your healthy leadership skills and your leadership positions in student orgs. But again, once you get in leader position, positions in your careers and also just in your personal life as well, it's always great to have a personal action plan. So screenshot this, um, jot it down and use it whenever you feel. And then the next one is just us recapping um, what we went over in our brief session. Remember those key elements of driving organization, setting boundaries, self-care. And I put on there, self-care isn't selfish, it's never. <laughs> and effective leadership, because effective leaders are better to lead always. And I just wanted to thank you all for your active participation. And do we have any questions or discussion about the topics from today? No, this is good. Thank you for um, bringing it to us. Of course. And I will have this recording available on our social media platform. And of course, if you want to stay connected or reach out to me about any of our upcoming um, leadership sold workshops, student or leadership development workshops or anything or any topics, my name again is Hallie Johnson. My email is hallie.johnson at unt.edu. And I serve again as the coordinator of student organizations. And I just want to thank y'all again for making time to come out and connect with me. And if you ever need anything, reach out. And I hope y'all have a great rest of your evening.